being mechanically skilled in Fortnite is a great thing. The ability to out edit and outbuild your opponents is certainly a great trait to have in Fortnite. However, with that said, a lot of newer competitive players struggle to realize the true importance of game sense. Game sense refers to your ability to make not only quick decisions, but make good decisions that benefit you. Game sense is absolutely crucial in competitive Fortnite and one of the best ways to practice and improve your game sense, apart from playing scrims, is to analyze pro players and learn from the decisions that they make. What's up guys, I'm not a robot, it's your host Cody, and to Dizzle, we're going to analyze some pro gameplay but with a twist. Instead of us analyzing the gameplay, we're going to have you, yes you, watching the video decide what decision to make. One great way to train game sense is to watch pros and put yourself in their shoes. Decide what you would do and why, then see the decision that they actually made and analyze why it did or didn't work. Let us know what you think about this style of analysis and if you'd like to see more of this style in the future. But before we dive into the fun, we need to ask you guys, do you want to get better at Fortnite? If the answer is yes, visit ProGuides.com in the description where you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching from some of the best players. We also have a ton of content to help you improve from your favorite pros like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to see massive improvement, head on over to ProGuides.com. Finally, one last thing before we get into the video, we've got to do the question of the day. Today's question is, which pro do you think has the best game sense? Personally, I think Benji Fishy's game sense is absolutely insane in solos. He always seems to have a plan no matter what his situation is, and he always survives the worst situations and comes back to win the game. I don't know what happens in that good old brand of his, but I wish it would happen in mine. Anyway, without further ado, let's start by looking at a clip from the World Cup champion, the one and only Booga. Alrighty guys, this one is a treat. In this clip, Booga has seven kills going into the end of the game in a solo cash cup. Right now, he's faced with an issue. The storm is near a lot of water and he needs to figure out a safe rotation to get there. There are a ton of players with builds already in the zone, but nobody around him. What route would you take in this situation to get to zone? There are three options. Should he cross the water near him with no players around, then rotate along the side of the hill? Or second, should he run straight to the other side of the middle island? Finally, his last choice, should he cross the middle island and swim across to reach the lowest population area? Well, with the second option, Booga is essentially running straight into multiple players who will target him, and even if he isn't killed, he'll likely have to make a water rotation next by going there. The third option would result in him getting targeted and likely killed, as you can't build in this deep water. So the first option to rotate uncontested across the water near him to reach the largest landmass with the highest chance of getting zone was his best choice. This works out great as he isn't shot in the water and gets into the zone without a scratch. How the frick did you do that, bro? Oopsie daisy, looks like you're in a predicament now. The half and half zone pops up and is pretty much as far away as possible. To get to this zone, we have to make a decision. Should he rotate early to get to a better position with risk of being shot at, or wait until the zone is closing and stay near the edge for picks? Booga chooses the first option to get out quickly. While he could get some nice picks from the second option, it's simply not worth the risk of getting targeted and held in the storm, even though he has fish in his inventory. Instead of risking it, he gets in early so he has better position moving forward. This proves to be a great choice as he's able to get closer to the zone and get some tags along the way. If he had rotated late, he'd be fighting a ton of people on the edge. The first moving zone pops up and yeesh! He's just not getting the best luck today, y'all. He's pretty much as far as possible, but there is a slight issue. He has no materials. This is a tough choice, but what would you do? Would you try and rotate early to potentially get a pick later, or would you try to get an impact frag to replenish your materials before your rotation? If you chose the second option, you're absolutely right. At this point in his current situation, the only way to survive would be to get more materials. He decides he has to get in and get a kill during this rotation. The unfortunate victim, this green lizard guy, gives him almost 600 extra material, and Booga's back in the game. Rest in peace, lizard guy. His fate was sealed the second Booga loaded into the lobby. While Booga didn't end up winning the game, it was his great decision making and strategy that led him to getting top 10 with 9 kills. Even though he didn't get the win, 14 points is nothing to laugh at. To be completely honest, without his great decision making, he could have easily died on any one of these decisions. This next game is a real treat. In this one, Benji ends up winning in a heal off against none other than his old duo, Mr. Savage. This game is bonkers. So without further ado, let's start. 
Benji is currently sitting on mid ground with 39 players alive, and Half Half is going to be popping up soon. He has four floppers, four mini shields, great weapons, and a bunch of bear claws that he got at the bakery earlier in the morning. But that's probably not that important to this. Guess what? The fifth zone is popping up, and it's actually not too bad. Right here, would you wait and go for picks? Or would you push into a zone early for better position? Benji actually gets a free rotation using almost no materials to get to zone, and everyone else is caught up in fights or trying to rotate. You might have noticed a pattern of pros rotating early. This is because when you rotate late, you might get some picks, but you're ultimately risking everything because most of the lobby will be in the safe zone looking for anyone on edge to spray at. After his rotation, he still has nearly 400 of every material. At this point, with his level of materials and his position, would you play for high ground or stay low to preserve your materials? Benji decides that the risk to reward ratio is worth it. Even though he'd lose some metal, he'd be on high ground and be the most dominant player in the match. This shows the importance of taking height when you have good materials and have the opportunity. We can see how great this turns out as he's completely uncontested and has the freedom to shoot at anyone he'd like to. All right, well, hold your horses. There's another decision to make. He's close to the sixth zone, but questioning whether or not to hold height. He has good materials, but that could change quickly if he has to use them heavily to get in. However, there are players below him whose builds he can use as structural support, so the odds of being broken down are relatively low. With all this in mind, should he hold height and shoot down on his opponents, or retreat from high ground to tunnel in? Benji makes the best choice to stay on high ground and shoot down. His material count, weapons, and healing items just scream high ground. Having height here may be the best possible scenario in any game he played this whole cup. The whole lobby has to rotate this way, and he can pick and choose anyone to shoot at. I'll take you, I'll take you, I'll take you, I'll take all of you. Using other players' builds as support, he continues to make his way into the zone while looking for kills from high ground along the way. Alongside this, the seventh zone pulls back towards his old builds. So not only is he still on a decent material count for this stage of the game, but he also has a ton of support and old structures so he can avoid wasting any more. At this point, the only realistic option is to hold height and spray down for eliminations. At this point, even though he's done super well so far, Benji runs out of material. He has to either hold high ground with no materials or search for a kill down low and regain good position later. Overall, Benji is confident that with his health, weapons, and healing items, he'd be able to get a kill quick while maintaining good position. Benji heads down low but can't seem to find anyone vulnerable enough. He does get elimination on someone in the storm who he tads, getting him to full shield, but he still isn't able to get materials. Instead of playing ultra aggressive at this point, Benji knows the zone is almost 100% closed and the other players are fighting, so with his four floppers and his bear claws, he has to make a choice. Should Benji go down and play aggressive with no materials, or should he stay safe and go for the heal off with his floppers and bear claws in the final zone? For this decision, the odds are heavily in Benji's favor with the heal off while pushing down is really a hit or miss situation. Instead of pushing down and risking it, Benji plays for the heal off and ends up winning it with ease. Nobody can really stack up against his four floppers and bear claws, and then finding three extra in the storm, man, that's just the icing on the cake. Overall, Benji's great early rotations, his decision to hold high ground from the fifth zone until the end, and his safe play with the floppers in the final zone resulted in him winning the game. Watching pro gameplay and analyzing their decisions is one of the most effective ways to improve your own decision-making ability in Fortnite. Top pros always watch one another very closely to find any strategies or tricks they can pick up on to improve their own performance. Whether you're an average player looking to get better in arena or a pro player looking to place higher, watching and analyzing other players is great. Think about how much we learned in such a short amount of time from just two clips. That is the power of analysis in this game. Keep watching pros and looking close at their gameplay and you'll be guaranteed to improve quickly. Also, let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these as we are happy to provide them if they are helping you. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES in the Fortnite item shop when you make any sort of purchases as it really helps us out and we really appreciate it a lot. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you'd like to see next on the channel. We aim to bring you guys the best daily Fortnite content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribe to the channel and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you to this video. Thanks for watching. Once again, it's your host, Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at Coco Medler. And I will see you in the next one. One, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Override alert, alert system crashing. I'm going down.